Hey guys, Matt here from Benchmark Sims. Uh, today we're going to look at the gun sights on the Viper. This includes the Enhanced Envelope Gun Sight, or EGS, as well as some of the older gun sights, which have gotten some love for BMS 436. Let's get started. So, I'm in a Block 52 Viper, looking at the EGS gun sight. Uh, this is the newest sight in the F-16, and you'll find it in the Tall Block Vipers, that is Block 40 and up, as well as some of the upgraded Block 30s. Without a radar lock, we're going to see three elements of the sight here. The gun cross, which shows where our cannon is aimed, the gun funnel, and the multiple reference gun sight lines, or MRGS. Now, no matter which gun sight we're using, whether or not we have a radar lock, the gun cross is always going to be our primary aim point. We want to figure out the bandit's plane of motion, that is, where they're headed, put the gun cross in front of them, and then we're going to use the rest of the symbology to fine tune our aim. So. Let's talk about how we might do that. We'll use the gun funnel to help us establish tracking shots. It's a historical site, which means that it shows where bullets fired in the past would be now. It follows that to hit the target, we need to keep the target in the funnel for at least one bullet time of flight. That is how long it takes for the rounds to get from you to your target. To range the target, we're going to place the wingtips of the target on the funnel and you can set the target wingspan on the list page of the DED under Man. If we hold the trigger and shoot, the Firing Evaluation Display System, or FEDS, will draw dots which move down the funnel at the same speed as the tracers travel, or would travel if we didn't have any tracers loaded. If we can't take a tracking shot because the target's moving quickly across our field of view, that is, it has a high line of sight, or LOS rate, we should take a snapshot by putting the gun cross in front of the target and holding down the trigger, letting the target fly through our stream of bullets. The MRGS lines are going to help us here by pointing at the gun cross so that placing the target on one of them will help line up our shot. So let's see some of that in action. I think we got a decent tracking shot here. We'll put the target in the funnel and start pulling the trigger. Got a couple hits and we'll get a little closer using the gun cross as our aim point and finish them off. Of course, this is all going to be a lot easier with a radar lock, because with a radar lock, we learn the position and, after a few seconds, the velocity and acceleration of the target. Once we've done this, EGS transitions to a radar-directed mode called Level 5. This mode is predictive, so the site is now guessing where the target will be when the bullets arrive, and tells you to aim accordingly. And now that we know much more about the target, you're going to see additional symbology appear on your HUD. The funnel's also going to line up with the target's plane of motion to help you pull into it. So the plus we see here is the 1G reticle. So if the target flies straight, this is where you should aim. The minus, on the other hand, is the max G reticle. So if the target pulls into you as hard as they can, up to 7.3G, this is where you should aim. The small circle that appears in between the two after a few seconds is the predicted reticle. So if the target continues their current flight path, this is where you should aim. That should be your usual aim point, and it also tells you how hard the target is pulling. So if this circle is closer to the plus, they're not pulling that hard. If it's closer to the minus, they're pulling more or less as hard as they can. The whiskers on either side of the plus show the target's out-of-play maneuver potential. So if they were to roll onto their side and pull as hard as they could, this shows how far they could maneuver in that direction in the bullet time of flight. To avoid rapid jumps in the sight picture and to smooth out inaccuracies in the radar measurements, the site has about a quarter second settling time. So this means that for it to be accurate, you need to either track the target with the pipper for one quarter second, or shoot one quarter second before the pipper arrives on the target. Again, aim first with the gun cross, then refine your aim with the rest of the site. After you squeeze the trigger, a six mil circle will show the location of your burst as it reaches the target. So it appears when the first bullets arrive, and disappears when the last bullets pass by. Use this to refine your aim. Now, radar-directed EGS certainly has its limitations, some of which we've tried to model more faithfully in 4.36, but compared to any other gun sight, it gives you the most information and the highest probability of a kill. So put the thing on the thing and shoot them down. Now, on older blocks of Vipers, you'll of course find older, more limited gun sights, but these are still incredibly capable. In fact, almost all of the Vipers air-to-air -air kills were made using these sights in the early 1980s. 
First, we have the snapshot sight. This just draws a gun's snake to show the path of bullets fired in the past, with tick marks showing where bullets shot one half, one, and three halves of a second ago would be. The small circle shows where bullets would be at the range set by the manual range knob on the throttle. With auto lock, we get two range options, 700 feet and 1500 feet for all these older gun sights. With the radar lock, the circle reflects the actual target range. This gun sight works similarly to the EGS gun funnel does yeah. without a radar lock, but it's one of the most difficult sights to use because it's not predictive and the range circle can move rapidly. Your best bet is to use the snake just to get in plane with the target, then aim with a gun cross. Next we have the iconic LCOS, or Lead Computing Optical Sight. Without a lock, the reticle shows target wingspan at the set range, and the sight behaves like a gyro sight from World War II or Korean War fighters. It's accurate only for a target turning in the same plane of motion at the same speed with the same G. Once you get a lock, the pivot jumps to the gun cross, then slides Watch. into position as the radar calculates target acceleration. The funny symbols around the pipper show us some interesting information. We have a range L, which shows us range of the target up to 12,000 feet, and it unwinds counterclockwise as we get closer to the target. We also have a overtake caret, which shows us closure to the target. So if it's pointed straight up at 12 o'clock, we have zero knots closure. If it's pointing to the right, we have positive closure. And if it's pointing to the left, we have negative closure. We've also got this funny line sticking out of the middle of the pipper. That's the lag line, and it's showing us which way the pipper is moving. We talked a bit ago about how pippers need time to settle out to account for noise and radar measurements or just sudden jerks in the airplane. This line is showing you that settling visually. So once it stops bouncing around and grows smaller, the pipper settled and it's a good time to take your shot. And finally, we have the combined snapshot and LCOS or SSLC sight. Yeah. This just combines the snapshot sight's gun snake with the LCOS pipper sans its lag line. Aim with the LCOS pipper and then evaluate your shot using the snake. The snake should pass over your target as the bullets reach it. I hope you found that helpful, and if you need more information, you should be able to find it in the Dash 34 manual that comes with BMS 4.36. Have fun, and remember, 